of September the 11th, 2001, going through our mind as, uh, as you wake up to uh, what happened 12 years ago. I mean, it's just, it's quite incredible that 12 years down the line, you, you mention the date 9-11 and people still think about that moment, think about where they were and still sort of get goosebumps when you have a look at those images of those planes crashing into the World Trade Center. It's absolutely frightening. I mean, just having a look at that, at that image is is disturbing in itself and the amount of people that were killed innocent lives lost and the way the world has changed since then uh, how has it changed for you i mean in terms of traveling that's just one one way that the world has changed but it certainly has changed in many many other ways and as we move forward now into this year of 2013 Let's talk about the situation in Syria and still focusing in on the United States. Pressure against this U.S. military strike on Syria from international communities is mounting. The British Parliament recently voted against any involvement in military action and polls suggest that more than 60% of the American population are against military intervention. The Syrian government has accepted a Russian proposal to put its chemical weapons under international control to avoid a possible U.S. military strike. Now, the US U.S. Congress is yet to vote on a proposal for military strikes against Syria. But the latest overnight was that the U.S. president has vowed to pursue a diplomatic initiative from Russia over Syria's chemical weapons. He has, however, voiced skepticism about it and urged Americans to uh, support his threat to use military force. Now, locally, however, the Concerned Africans Forum has come out strong against any military strike on Syria by the U.S. They have written an open letter to U.N. Secretary Ban Gi Moon on their grievances regarding this particular issue. And to tell us more, we are joined in studio by Dr. Sidney Mufamade from the Concerned Africans Forum. He is also a director at the School of Leadership at the University of Johannesburg. It's wonderful to have you and welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Leanne. All right. Now, um, an open letter uh, you, 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 that you, you have written and the Concerned Africa Forum in a statement said, the Concerned Africa Forum believes that military strikes, even if limited, will not take Syria any closer to resolving a tragic conflict. Let's, let's elaborate on that a bit. Yes, uh, Leon, uh, watchers of global affairs, in particular those who watch the behavior of America on the international stage, uh, will tell you that uh, uh, Syria does not represent a new pattern of intervention uh, in the world by the United States of America. The U.S. administrations have always been involved in conflict situations by way of giving covert and clandestine support either to repressive regimes or to rebellions against governments that are refusing to tow the American line. Now, in the case of Syria, America has been involved before this unfortunate, brutal attack of the 21st of August. They were giving intelligence and military backup to the rebellion. This stands in direct contrast to the calls which the international community have been making on the domestic actors in Syria, that is to both the Assad government and the opposition to say they must chart a political path out of this violent conflict. Mm. Now, I mean, you go on to, to call for a negotiated resolution on the Syrian conflict in this, in this open letter. What would you like to see happening? When, when you talk about a negotiated resolution, would you like to see the party sitting around the table and negotiating this out? Is this really a possibility? Well, to start with, you will recall that uh, President Obama on the 21st of August last year, uh, um, incidentally, a year to the day before this horrendous strike that took place outside Damascus, he drew a, a red line and said, should the Assad government uh, um, launch chemical attacks against the people, there is going to be retribution. Now. This matter has to be investigated. The international community must establish who exactly was behind these attacks. And once we have found out who it was that did this, they must be made to account. Mm. But 
that red line which was drawn by the Obama administration, it, it's very difficult for us to understand why would Assad, uh, knowing how brutal also uh, and retributive uh, the American administration can be, why would he cross that red line? Yeah. Is it not possible also that uh, uh, the fact of the warning itself could have uh, injected into the situation a, 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 um, um, a perverse incentive on the part of those who want to see muscular intervention that is calculated at removing the Assad regime. Uh, I'm saying that is also a possible scenario, yeah. which explains why no precipitate action should be taken by any single country, but the matter must be left in the hands of the competent international organizations to deal with. You also um, talk about the powerful forces that have taken sides in Syria um, in favor of seeking regime change. Talk to us a little bit more about this. What are you talking about here? Well, you see, the fact of the matter is that uh, if you look at the Middle East as a region and you look at the civil conflict in Syria, you will find that there are very strong passions uh, in support of both parties to the conflict. In other words, I'm saying you don't have a unified Middle Eastern response. The, uh, the rebels or the rebellion, it's supported by some countries in the Middle East, whilst Assad also enjoys the support of some other countries in the Middle East. So there is a strong risk of a regional contagion if you just act without taking into account what actually exists, what I've just painted now. Now, the notion that uh, you can bypass Assad mm. and still get peace in Syria, it's certainly misinformed. Yeah. Nobody should be encouraged to approach that situation harboring a zero-sum ambition. Uh, we will impose peace on Syria by excluding someone else. I think the example of Afghanistan, Iraq, and uh, recently um, um, uh, uh, Libya yeah. is very instructive in, the, on, on, uh, in this regard. The decapitation of uh, Gaddafi, the decapitation of uh, Saddam Hussein yeah. has not brought peace in those countries. Have you received responses yet? When did you send the letter off? Well, this is an open letter which mm. is intended, by the way, to be a contribution to the discussions. To, to the discussions. Yeah, okay. We are happy that uh, at least uh, the recent New York Times CBS polls have shown that the broad majority of the American people do not support a strike on Syria. Yeah. All right. Let's leave it there. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for uh, elaborating on your vision for this. Uh, Dr. Sidney Mufamadi from the Concerned Africans Forum. Thanks for being our guest here on Morning Live.